Straight 75 in Germany was actually really good. Again, that was a weird video because the mist of that morning, we didn't think we were going to be able to film that morning and it lift the, the, the mist lifted. I made a double bogey on the first. Standard. Which a lot of people are like, here he is. Yeah, he's, he's here, yeah. The, His the, golf game. The show, the circus is in town. You went to a circus <laughs> for that, didn't you? I did. I went, I went double bogey, bogey for the first three. So I was four over through three. Nice. Standard. But then the grit the determination came out and the, the dog inside me kept growling. The chihuahua. The chihuahua. So that video went out, played very well, played solid. Seb played really, really well. He shot under par. It's funny though. Seb got a lot of, a lot of criticism about his golf swing. Mm. And it's interesting how people kind of see golf swing techniques, etc. Because Seb is a very, very, very good player. His short game is ridiculous. And... He doesn't hit it far, his own account. He's not the tallest person in the world, he, and he kind of just gets it out there, but always puts it in play. But his, the criticism of his technique was crazy. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of nasty people I out think, there. You know what? And I, I don't want to defend those people because it's ridiculous. Leaving negative comments on a YouTube video in itself is a bit over the top. But I think there is something about someone that's good at a sport that doesn't do it in the most textbook way. It can either be loved or hated, if that makes sense. And I, again, Seb is a great kind of two handicap golfer, gets out there, getting very good, like you said, around the green, so fair play. But like when I see a, a PJ Tour player or a major champion who doesn't swing it orthodoxly, is that the right word, orthodoxly? Yeah. For some reason, I don't like it. I was never a fan of Bubba. Because, really? yeah, I don't know what it is. He, he was lefty, which I'm not always a huge fan of for some reason. Sorry, lefties. I don't know what it is. But the, weirdly, I do like left footed footballers. But anyway, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, his swing was so unorthodox. His shape was so unorthodox. I didn't really like it. What I, about Jim Furyk? Again, not really liking it. Matt Wolf? Not liking it. I'm, I'm very much in the camp of I love Tiger. I love Adam, Adam Scott. Scott. Rory, where it looks so, so good. But. Yeah, I don't know. Are you on the same page or not? I don't know. For me, often, where I where I get a little bit unstuck with the tour pros swinging like that is mad respect for those guys not um, becoming convinced to change the swing yes. and the technique. Like, surely along those times and periods, like Bubba Watson, you look, Bubba's famously never had a golf lesson and you look at Bubba and, and he's rise up to up to stardom and, and imagine him being like a 16 17 year old kid and he's he's like the new up and coming talent and you're surprised that he, he doesn't come to any pressure of a golf coach or somebody going oh no you need to change all this this is never going to work yeah. out on tour you're never going to win a major swinging like that do you know what i mean absolutely but how can they almost blank that out similar to like jim Furyk, matt wolf obviously does does actually use a golf uh, George Gankus and almost that's the to some degree the exaggerated version of of uh, Matt Wolf swing is something that George actually is a big fan of um but it's surprising that not more I mean Matt Wolf has report you know um very famously this year's not not performed on live and Brooks Kepke's on Brooks Kepke's team and Brooks Kepke wants him out and all the you know there's obviously a fallout there but I wonder how much of it does play on your mind when you've got when you've not got the most ortho, ortho, uh, orthodox swing, when it's not going well, like, what do you change? Like, what do you, you know, it's very mm. difficult. You, you, there must be times where Bubba Watson or Jim Furyk or, you know, all these guys who've had more or, unorthodox swings are going, it's not working. I need to almost change everything. But they never have, have the. Well, that's the thing. And I think if you always separate the two, like I said, the story of it and the background versus the actual look of it, like you said, you, you've got to respect those guys that they have got these crazy swings, but yet they've done so well. But to watch it, I'm not always a fan. But I also think, and again, you'll know more about this than, than me, but with the evolution of obviously Trapman and GC Quad and the way pros are actually teaching now, and it being so much more about actually delivery of the golf club rather than how it looks in a camera, yet we see more what we'd class as weird swings. And I was just thinking then, I'd had to Google his name, the guy that won the, the British Amateur or the Amateur Championship this year, that Christo Lamprecht, he had a really bad kind of big dip, a tall guy really dipped into it, but smashes it miles and... I don't know how he'll go on his career. He did well at the start of the first couple of days in the open and then fell away. But he won the amateur championship. An elite, elite, elite golfer with a swing that you wouldn't think he yeah. should have almost. I definitely think with the introduction, but this is where, again, going back to like Jim Furyk and, and Bubba Watson, those guys, you know, what's quite interesting when you look at the timeline of golf coaching over the years, 
when I even when I very very first started coaching, probably about fifteen years ago now, video analysis wasn't a big thing. No, it wasn't super popular. It was it was quite hard to find a golf coach with video analysis. Launch monitors were, were a thing of the of the future. Like that wasn't even like on people's radar yet. Pardon uh, the pun. And then, and then <laughs> <laughs> so so everything pre video camera. I can imagine swings being quite funky and a bit different. Like you say, because who's going to show them otherwise? And mm. one of the main reasons why I got video camera when I first coached, I was coaching this guy who had this tremendously long backswing, like stupidly long, and he did really need to fix it. And he just wouldn't believe me that it was long. And I had to hire a video camera to video him, to show him his, his swing was that long. And he yeah. almost didn't believe me. He couldn't believe that it was that long. And video analysis was so useful to be able to show people, right, this is what you feel you doing but this is the reality let's see if we can make some changes here but always focusing on result not mm. just to make the swing look pretty always focusing on results um and and but so pre-video cameras i can imagine where where there was a few funky swings like a jim furick etc but like through bubba watson's era he would have been definitely grown up in the in the era of um of video cameras but he still continues to swing the way he was. And then it's been a very short window, really. And then launch monitors have become so, so big. It's almost made video cameras obsolete. Mm. Like there's not many guys. Well, there still will be, obviously. But you go on a driving range now at a tour venue. What's almost every single golfer along the line got, they've either got a GC quad, a trap man, et cetera. And they're always looking at launch monitor data and they're always looking at delivery or whatever it may be, numbers, launch angle, spin rates, distance, et cetera. Feeling those numbers, whatever it may be. Certainly in a tournament, you don't see that many people behind with a, with a camera. No, Obviously, it's, it's all on phone now. It's just more to, yeah. It, it's almost more to double check it really on camera now. Or they kind of post it on social media. But it goes to, back to this kind of idea that impact is the most important factor correct like how that club hits the ball it doesn't know how it went up it doesn't know how it came down um impact is the key and even seb mentioned a couple, he, i think he replied to a couple of people he's, he's had a, a back injury which also prevents him from turning and rotating the way that he would be more desirable um but all in all i think technique all that matters is how that ball flies to the hole. Correct. But those, those comments, though, of people are giving him a hard time, which is, again, ridiculous. It comes from a level of jealousy because people might believe their golf swing is better looking than Seb. And it might be, you know, in terms of visually. But the fact that Seb, who doesn't hit a long way, is shooting these really good scores and is such a good golfer, I think it might rub some people up the wrong way, which is a bit pathetic. But uh, anyway, if you enjoyed that video clip, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the weekly full length episodes every single Tuesday. You can also listen to it in the car on Apple, Spotify, and all of your favorite podcast platforms.